Hello, you guys, and welcome. Welcome to the Good News Sunday Show. My name is Sonia McCullough Lockridge, and I am your host. And I joy, I joy to come to you in this fashion. And today, today, we are continuing in our efforts to learn something new. And that something new is we have kind of packaged it up a little bit in something that we have titled 31 Days of the Art of Engaging the Word Exegetically in an Expository Fashion. 31 Days of the Art of Engaging the Word Exegetically in an Expository Fashion. And I am blessed and thankful, very, very thankful to, and honored, actually, to be tackling this task. So today, today is day 21 of 31. So we have 10 more days to go. So for the next 10 days today, which is day 21, we are looking at transitional sentences. Tomorrow, which is the 22nd, we will be looking at the transitional paragraph. And Monday, the 23rd, we will look, be looking at the transitional paragraph as well. Tuesday, we will be talking about how the body of the message is held together. Wednesday, we will be talking about what are the threads that hold the body together. Thursday, we will be talking about how to tailor the body. Then on the 27th, we will be talking about the illustrative touch. On the 28th, we will be delving into the introduction and how to how to properly organize the introduction. Then on the 29th, we will be talking about how to proper, properly conclude the message and apply and how to make the application so people may have the opportunity for transformation. Then on the 30th, we'll be talking a little bit more about titles, more about titling our message. And then finally, on the last day, we will be talking about how to trim and tape up our message, kind of how to bind it up. So that is what we have for the next 10 days. After that, the Good News Sunday show will be returning to its regular weekly format. The Good News Sunday Show will be returning to its regular weekly format. Now, at some point in time, we will be introducing a new thing, which I will be letting you guys know on this channel what the new thing is. I, I know what it is. I just can't reveal it yet. So... At some point in time, we'll be revealing the thing that we're going to use or we're going to use as a platform to talk about for the rest of these, for the rest of this study of how to expound on messages. Okay, so we, we, will, we will have a new place, a new home for that in the future. We look forward to that. So, today we're talking about what is a transitional sentence. And a transitional sentence answers the question of the proposition. The transitional sentence answers the question of the proposition. Okay? So, that is is the job of the transitional sentence. It is to answer the question of the proposition. The transitional sentence should consist of the following elements. The response to the question and the repeating of the proposition. So we want to re repeat or restate the proposition 
and then we want to restate the question and make sure that the interrogative is restated as well. Make sure the question is restated as well. Also, the transitional sentence forms a logical bridge between the proposition and the, and the main body parts of the message. The transitional sentence forms a logical bridge between the, between the proposition and the main points of the body of the message. That is what a transitional, that's another job of the transitional sentence. And furthermore, Mr. Robinson talks a little bit about transitional sentences in his book as well. And he says, transitional statements particularly are particularly significant because they point up relationships of the parts of a whole. So they wrap up relationships that are parts of wholes. This is the reason why it takes three or four statements and restatements of a point to make it clear to an audience. An effective transition notifies the, notifies the audience that you are moving on. An effective transition notifies the audience that you are moving on. We will often review where you have been, identify the thought to which you are moving, relate what has been said to the main subject or idea, and interest the hearer in the thoughts that is to follow. So a transitional sentence, another job of the transitional sentence, the word trans, you know, taking us somewhere. And so another job of the transitional se sentence is to alert where we are going and to restate where we have been. To alert where we are going and to restate where we have been and where we just came from. So if we're going to more than one destination, the transitional sentence will let us know that we have two more destinations of which to go. So that is my way of saying what the transitional sen sentence does as well. And Mr. Robinson goes on to say that clear transitions don't spring readily into the mind and that they should be planned in advance. Effective transitions state or imply the logical or psychological connections between the introduction and the body, which the body points to the conclusion, of course. Some transitional linking in your message may accomplish this in just a few words, but other major transitions may require a paragraph. Sometimes a transitional paragraph is necessary to establish the unity and the order of points and the movement in the message. So, while transitions should be written out and included in parentheses in our outline, you often amplify and enlarge them even more as you actually speak the message that you are there to speak. So, the transitional sentences are amplified and enlarged. So if we were on a bus, if we were on a bus and there was a stop, because a stop on a bus is a movement. So if we were on a bus and there was a stop, then the bus driver normally alerts us to the fact that we're stopping at 22nd and at the corner of 22nd and 23rd Street. So the bus driver will say normally that our next stop is at 22nd and 23rd Street. So, that is an, an alert, and it's amplified, and it is enlarged because we are going somewhere. So, transitional sentences help move us through the body of the message. 
And as Mr. Robinson stated there in his text, that they should be they should be highlighted in our outline with parentheses. So I love when I hear a messenger preach. I love it when when they always promise that hold on just a little bit. We're going somewhere. Just stick tight with me. We are going somewhere. This is their way to alert us to the fact that we are. this message is moving along. This message is moving along. So they don't want us to get bored or tired. So they alert us to the fact that there is a destination ahead and that we are quickly moving in the direction of the destination and to hold tight in our seats because the, we're going to we're going to make some stops in this message. There are going to be some stops. So I want you to hold on. I want you to listen tight because we're going somewhere. This is not a stagnated message. I actually have something to say. And when I get to that place in which I have something to say, something to amplify, then I want you to be ready. I want you to be ready. So... I've listened to enough sermons to know that transitional sentences are extremely important. Not only are transitional sentences extremely important, but the transitional paragraph is of great importance as well. And tomorrow and the next day, we will be talking about the transitional paragraph and... Tomorrow we'll be talking about the transitional paragraph in and of itself. And then the following day, we will be talking about where to place these transitions in the body of your message. So where these transitions should be placed in the body of a message. So that is more or less all I have for us today. I thank you for your time and attention. And once again... My name is Sonia McCullough Lockridge, and I'm signing out for the Good News Sunday Show, Keyword Bible Studies, and the one and only Jesus.com. Thank you, and be blessed. Be blessed in the Lord on this very day. Thank you.